So who's got a coin? We need the coin to start. No, just kidding. Um, this is the session about 10 tips for successful migration from Data Factory and Databricks to Synapse Analytics. If you're in the wrong session, this is your cue. Um, my name is Dave Ruiter. I'm a consultant based from the Netherlands. I have a company called Blue Rocket. If you want to do more of these migrations and architecture advice, just call me. And if you want to reach me, uh, some details are here on the screen. I'm a Microsoft MVP as well. So let's start because it's only 20 minutes uh, and I want to leave some room at the end for questions, uh, which uh, probably is going to be a challenge. Um, first one, solution architecture differences. And here I want to emphasize SQL serverless, serverless pools. Um, you might already have been using it. So Synapse Analytics was already part of your architecture. Um, to read the data from your data lake, get it into Power BI using a cost-efficient service, like serverless views, ser serverless pools. Um, but definitely, if you're not going to use Databricks, this is your only go-to option to uh, give the data from your lake to Power BI uh, if you use Delta tables. Because the similar engine uh, capability that Databricks has to just turn on your Spark cluster and use Power BI to talk to your Spark cluster, that's not available with the Spark cluster in Azure Synapse Analytics. You cannot query it with ad hoc queries coming from a tool like Power BI. So serverless is your go-to uh, option to do that. Also, keep in mind, a lot of the Delta features are proprietary for Databricks. So things like autoloader or um, Structured streaming in advanced capabilities, I'll talk a bit more about it later. Um, they are limited or not available in Synapse Analytics because Synapse Analytics uses the open source version of Delta. And um, yeah, it doesn't contain all of the goodies that Databricks offers you. Second one, Spark version compatibility. Um, when you have your Spark cluster, um, keep in mind, in Databricks, you're really free to configure it anything, any way you want. There's lots of families of virtual machines that you can choose off from. Um, within Synapse Analytics, only a couple options are available. These sizes there, that, are, that you can find on the screen. That is a benefit, but also a, yeah, a limitation. Um, it can be really intimidating in Databricks to select the right family size and you know, a cluster a type and size and who, yeah. It's one of the architecture decisions that, that we make every, day, every week. In the Synapse Analytics, it's easier. Just start with medium, and then if it's too much, go to small. If it's too less, go higher. It's really easy. Uh, so think about that. And please note, um, there's a minimum of three nodes, and you cannot have a single node cluster with, with only the driver node. It's not possible. So keep in mind that you, um, yeah, that's an incompatibility. Um, then if you have a selection of runtimes, um, runtime 3.1 is currently available, uh, so that's good. That's, that's, it has a lot of the really essential things for your architecture. And um, you know, you'll, be, you'll be fine with that. But keep in mind that uh, Databricks has newer uh, options. So if you're already on that, uh, just a tip, um, think about that before you uh, migrate. Uh, maybe your current solution, you first test it on um, the LTS version of Databricks, which is 9.1, uh, which has the same Spark engine. While we are talking about Spark, it's also interesting to note that notebooks in Azure Synapse, Synapse Analytics do not um, tap into the backend cluster as you normally are used to within, with Databricks. Um, each notebook has its own session, Spark session, and if you, if you have multiple notebooks open, they all have their own session and um, hardware. Uh, so you can quickly run out of available cores and memory if you, yeah, if you do that. In Databricks, it, you, it doesn't matter. Uh, if it, the, whole the whole pool of developers can just open up notebooks, close them, and they all share the same uh, cluster in the back end. It works uh, rather differently in Azure Synapse Analytics. 
So that's that's also a tip I really want to um, yeah give you. Um, focus on that early on, so you get to know that you, you you deep dive in how it works, and consider having developer specific clusters maybe. So you just have your own bubble. You you cannot just have um, somebody interfering with your cluster and your session capabilities, uh, and you have to call them and ask them, hey, can you shut down your session? I cannot start mine. So that that helps, and stopping sessions also helps to free up some of your um, um, server availability. This, um, at least the same languages are supported in Azure Synapse Analytics. Uh, if you look at the uh, the notebook, uh, but they also have .NET support. In the past, I have had some cases where I was like, hmm, there's this library available, but I cannot use it in my Databricks notebook. In Synapse, that would have been an option because that that was a DLL that I you know, can use in, um, in Synapse because it has sharp .NET support. Also an important, important tip. And then a benefit of Azure Synapse Analytics is that uh, you don't have to mount and unmount and worry about that uh, um, if you, if you want to talk to your Azure Data Lake storage because you have to configure it once when you spin up your Azure Synapse Analytics resource and then the data lake is already connected and all of your notebooks just can talk to that. You don't have to mount it. No worries. The new cluster, you don't care. It's, still, it's already available. Um, if you have multiple storage accounts or others, then yes, you have to uh, connect them via linked, linked service, uh, but then they will also be available out of the box. So they, they take care of that. Third topic, structured streaming. I already mentioned that. Um, if you don't know this, you don't use it yet, um, it's a micro-batch processing uh, that's based on the Spark engine. And basically what you normally do, with you, you do ETL. This is a streaming way where they create really small batches for you that, that does th and they do the ETL, uh, but then they are, um, yeah, they can run infinitely in sort of micro loops and they check out, for instance, your delta table, see if there are new records, automatically pick them up and do your transformations and um, yeah, send them to the, to, to the des destination. Really nice technology. In Azure Synapse Analytics, it is available and um, it, in the core, it works the same way, so that's good. There are some limitations. You cannot use them, or it's limited. I didn't yeah, really find the good documentation about it just yet, but uh, jobs support. So if you have a Spark job and you want to do structured streaming, it works differently, or not at all. I don't know for sure. If you, if you know, tell me. Um, and you cannot really display the query with using uh, the display command. It's not available yet. Uh, and yeah, if you are using this a lot, um, don't, yeah, don't stress it's not you. This function just doesn't work at all. Um, and last thing, um, progress of your running structured streamings are not visually um, available. The, the, there are less uh, out-of-the-box charts available to just show how the queries are running. You have to do that manually yourself. So be prepared for that if you migrate your structured streamings. Um, there's some, some coding you need to do yourself to yeah, you know, see what's going on, how many records are processed, etc. Your deployment of your solution also uh, works rather differently. Um, if you now have some notebooks and for every commit in your Git repo, you do some code linting, some automated testing. Um, for linting, uh, for, for example, the notebooks are not stored in the same way. Uh, it's not a big Python script. It is some form of JSON with some code in there. So um, your out-of-the-box black or um, pep8, whatever you want to use, it doesn't work uh, immediately. Uh, maybe you have to make a fork and make it work because you have to point it to the section in your notebook file, in your Git, where your Python code is. Um, notebook deployment. Um, if you were already using SQL Player for your Data Factory, Databricks things, and I can highly recommend that, uh, his PowerShell um, modules are, are really, really good, then you can also use them for your Synapse Analytics solution artifacts. Um, the Data Factory way of working, which is rather awkward, 
also works in the Synapse Analytics in the same awkward way. Be prepared for that. Um, so if you don't like that, uh, SQL Player is a nice tip um, to look at. All right. Yes. Is this a f is the SQL Player um, a PowerShell module a full replacement of the ARM template based out of the box functionality? Yes, it is. Similar to how the ADF um, PowerShell module helps you to replace it. Yes. Yeah. 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 The creator of this module is here today. So if you see him walking, or just send him a tweet, and if you want to talk about him, you can, uh, yeah, uh, pull him over and uh, and talk about it more. Um, yeah, next one, monitoring. So tip number five. Um, there is also excellent integration for log analytics uh, monitoring. So th that's, that's no, no deal, uh, no problem. Um, but if you now uh, have some way of cluster monitoring using Ganglia, if you're, if you're um, yeah, accustomed to that, you used to that. You, I use it all the time to check out the cluster performance. Uh, Databricks is just a click of a button, and I get all this information about my cluster. That that overview, the Ganglia overview, is not available in Synapse Analytics. So be prepared for that. You have to do your own um, report yourself uh, based on the metrics that are sent to Log Analytics. Um, the Spark application monitoring has some really nice out-of-the-box options that are maybe even simpler than Spark application logging in Databricks. So both are some scripting, some coding, uh, but might work easier. Uh, the documentation by Microsoft on this topic is, is excellent. So if you, if you, are, if you do want to send your Spark application logs to Log Analytics, uh, check out the options in the documentation. Number six, dbutils. Um, DB and dbutils stand for Databricks. I don't know if you know that, but um, so that, that's, I, I think I, uh, maybe that's incorrect. I think they stand for that. Um, uh, I do know one thing. This is not dbutils in Synapse Analytics, but there is a counterpart. It's called MS Spark utils. So um, MS, Microsoft Spark, so. Um, yeah, uh, it works in a similar way. I think it's just a, p a fork uh, uh, of some, some open source um, a version of, of dbutils. And a lot of the same commands are available in this. Um, so, so if you do a find and replace of your code where you use dbutils, replace it with MS Spark utils, 9 out of 10 uh, uh, usages will work. Uh, but there is an area that doesn't uh, work the same way. Um, check, out the, check out the documentation um, and, and be prepared to um, create some extra code for the, the stuff that's maybe just one, one dbu to command in Databricks. In uh, uh, Azure Synapse Analytics, you might need to do more hard coding Python to do the same, or, or Spark or uh, Scala code. Um, yeah. Notebook management shortcuts, also a tip. Um, same uh, uh, yeah, way of workings are available. Uh, if, if you're used to uh, using notebook commands, um, um, the same options are available. But the actual key that you have to press usually is different. Uh, so Shift Enter, Alt Enter, con Control Enter work the same, but um, I. I I didn't know that uh, inserting a cell above is an the letter A. Uh, maybe in Databricks it's the same way, but uh, when I checked this out, I was like, hmm, okay. And um, yeah, so in Synapse Analytics, you have lots of keys that you can use, lots of shortcuts, uh, but they might be a little bit different than what you're used to. The number nine, orchestration pitfalls. Um, Notebooks in Databricks, if you want to parameterize them, you just send uh, a value to the widget, uh, and you use widgets for that. In Azure Synapse Analytics, there are widgets. I don't know if you can use them in the same way, but um, forget about them for that purpose. 
they, there is in Synapse Analytics something called parameters. And the first command of your notebook is where you can declare variables. And then you enable the parameters of that, um, of that cell, that command. And then Microsoft will know that you can override those, value, those variables during runtime, for instance, from Data Factory. So uh, let's say we have just uh, yeah, a run ID. And uh, I, for my development, I just give it a GUID. And then from Data Factory, I can just uh, not data factory. We have Synapse, so it's a it's a pipeline, but it's not data factory pipeline. Um, you can just provide it with the run ID uh, of the um, the context, but it's not a widget. It's a parameter. It works a little bit different, uh, but it provides the same functionality. Then again, um, when you're orchestrating, be aware of your session slash cluster sharing limitations. Um, Executing a notebook, uh, I also had issues with that, that it didn't have enough um, cores available on my cluster because I had some sessions open. I, I called the same cluster. So in the end, I just created a second cluster for my orchestration stuff. And whenever I kicked that off to do a, a debug run, it was uh, cluster number two. And my developers and myself, we just used cluster number one to continue with our, uh, with our work. Uh, well, it, uh, yeah, made our life a little bit more predictable um, uh, in that way. There is support for Spark jobs, and you can provide it with a jar and I think also a Python file that needs to be executed, but you cannot tell it to execute a notebook. Be aware of that. And there's no support yet in the pipeline section of Synapse Analytics for Power Query activities, and you cannot share your integration runtime over multiple factories, which is something that a lot of solution platform architect architectures use. Uh, so you have a single integration runtime here, and then there's multiple data factories that use that integration runtime to reshare the same virtual machine. Uh, that, that, that setup, you cannot do that with Synapse Analytics. Be aware of that. Further, 99% of the pipeline activities and, and functions and coding of Data Factory is just ported and available in Synapse Analytics. So don't, don't worry too much about your Data Factory solution br yeah, brought over. There, there is our, like 1% differs. Um, and you, usually you can work around those differences. Topic number nine, cost management. Um, Databricks. Um, you ha you, yeah, you have to worry about your server and um, y your cluster, I mean. And it's predictable, but can also be expensive. So yeah, if you know your way around, then uh, that's something that you really yeah, focus on. In Synapse Analytics, uh, you, will you'll, you will be going to use serverless pools more often for auto-querying of your data and loading data into Power BI and other tools. And uh, they have their own cost. So um, be, be aware of that. Uh, focus on that. Try to yeah, you know, learn what to look for. Um, it's, it's a cost per query and not per minute. You can set up budgets and you can pre-purchase your, uh, your, your resources. Uh, so that is a benefit as well. Lastly, um, best practices. I already have one. Um, make multiple Spark pools. Um, so you can just uh, um, share it amongst your, your colleagues and um, r make sure you start it on time. Um, and that's dif more difficult to do in Synapse Analytics than in Databricks. Um, and they take one to five minutes to scale up and um, um, be ready for you. So b yeah, it takes a little bit longer than in Databricks. And for the rest of the best practices, Check out the documentation by Microsoft. There are yeah, you know, extensive pages for SQL pools in serverless versions, dedicated versions. Uh, so that's uh, also something I, um, I want to give to you. Um, it is time. Um, please fill out. I have the, the slide for the feedback, but it's right here.
still a, a virtual question. Does Synapse have the concept of job clusters, like we have in Databricks? Does runtime of, of jobs and these work once complete? Does uh, Synapse Analytics have the concept of job clusters um, that, that, that is available in Databricks versus the interactive clusters? So you have two types of clusters. The answer is no. There's no job cluster uh, type in Synapse Analytics. Uh, don't forget to do the feedback thing. And I'll be here a couple minutes and uh, uh, yeah, available for more questions. Or find me online, Dave Ruiter, at LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. Have a nice day.